darlings, Mimi G here with another tutorial as part of the Mimi G for Michael Levine collaboration. I'm really excited to be doing a swimsuit sew along, so let's get started. The pattern I've chosen to work with is McCall's 5400. It's a swimsuit pattern that has several variations for the bottom and the top, but I've chosen to do view E and H. The reason I've chosen those two is because it has a little bit of a vintage feel and I want that old kind of vintage pinup look without it being over the top. I still want to keep it modern and so I'm going to take those two pattern pieces and I'm going to create kind of my version of a high waist bathing suit and I'm going to show you how to make one too. Let's talk tools. You're of course going to need McCall's pattern 5400. You're going to need a pair of scissors, some pins, some pattern weights. These are just big washers that I get at my local home improvement store, but they get the job done and they're pretty cheap. Uh, you're going to need a seam ripper just in case you make a mistake and you need to rip out your seams. You're going to need a fabric marking pen. Now you could use a chalk roller, but I just find that this works better on swimwear fabric. It, one side disappears with water and one side disappears with air and you're going to need some elastic. Now you're going to need swimwear elastic which is not always written on the front of the package. So if it's not, just make sure that you're purchasing 3 eighths of an inch wide braided elastic and in the back of the package it should say sleeves, swimwear, leg bands, waistbands, etc. Of course, you're going to need some very cool swimwear fabric. Michael Levine's has a great selection of swimwear fabric, which is where I got mine, of course. And you're going to need anywhere between a half yard to five eighths of a yard, depending on your size. And the back of the pattern envelope does give you how much fabric you're going to need for the size that you're cutting out, so reference the back of the envelope. Now. You're also going to need some swimwear lining. Now swimwear lining is technically a little thinner than the swimwear fabric, but I've chosen to just purchase another swimwear fabric in a solid color. The reason I'm doing that is because I prefer a little more coverage and I want the, my bottoms to be fully lined. And so in order to do that, I want to use a fabric that in essence is going to also create a Spanx effect and hold it all in. So therefore, I've chosen to use another swimwear fabric instead of a thinner lining. You can use either or. It really is up to you. Now you're going to need to cut out all of your pattern pieces. So go through your pattern, highlight all of the, all of the pieces that you need for view E and view H. The H, uh, view H is the bottoms and view E is the top. So you want to make sure that you cut out all of the pieces and I'm going to review those pieces with you now. I have already cut out my pattern pieces. So for the top, you're going to need pattern piece number 16, and the numbers are written on the pattern pieces. Pattern piece number 17. Pattern piece number 14. Number 18. Number 20. And this number 19 is an elastic guide. You don't actually cut this out of fabric. You just use this to measure out how much elastic you're going to need. Now set those aside and make sure that you have cut out all of the pieces for the bottom. You're going to need piece number 27, piece number 28, piece number 23 is the lining, is um, actually the little crotch uh, lining that you're going to insert. However, I am choosing to line my entire bottom. And so because of that, I will not be using pattern piece 23. If you do not want to line the entire bottom, you can use this and follow the instructions given in the um, pattern. Now you're going to have two elastic guides. You're going to have one uh, for pattern piece number 29 and one for pattern piece 26. And you're going to need to cut those out of elastic, but I'll show you how to do that when we get to that part. So once you have cut off all of your pattern pieces in the proper size, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut them out of fabric. Okay, we're going to get started by cutting out the bottom first. So I have turned my fabric onto itself. I have folded over um, my fabric. Right sides are facing each other. And I've just folded enough so that my pattern pieces fit. I don't need to fold the, the entire thing in half. And so I'm going to start with pattern piece 28. Now if you're going to fully line the bottom like I am, you're only going to need pattern pieces 27 and 28. 
If you're not and instead are just going to use a crotch lining, then you will need pattern piece 23 and follow the directions in the pattern. Now, we're going to lay this pattern piece number 28 onto our fabric with the edge of my pattern piece along the edge of the fold of the fabric as indicated on the pattern piece. But we're going to need to add three inches to the top of this because I want a high waist bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working six inches from the top of my fabric and then I'm going to go ahead and lay my pattern piece down. Now you should have your marking pen um, and you should have a French curve ruler. You can get this at any local Joann's, Hancock's or online. They're only a couple of bucks um, and you don't absolutely need it but it is a lot easier to make a curve using it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to measure up three inches from the top of the pattern piece. So you're going to measure three inches. And you're going to use your curve and you're going to place it so that it naturally takes a curve. You're basically following the same shape of the, pa of the pattern piece, but you're doing it three inches higher. Now that we've added the height to our pattern piece, we can go ahead and cut it out. Make sure you transfer any notches by making a little clip or any circles or dots or squares that you see. They must be transferred so you want to make sure when you see it, you make a little mark using your fabric marker. There is a notch here at the bottom of the crotch in the back so I'm going to make a snip. Now you can remove all of that, and now you have a much higher back piece. Now we're going to cut out our front piece. Take pattern piece number 27, and don't forget that you need to add 3 inches to the top, so make sure you're working with enough space at the top. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to measure up three inches. And you're going to cut it out. Don't forget to transfer your markings. There is a notch on the side. There is a notch at the bottom of the crotch. Remove your weights and now you have a much higher front piece. Now all you need to do is cut out these exact pieces out of your swimwear lining fabric. Once you've cut out your uh, bottom pieces 27 and 28 out of both swimwear and lining, we're going to go ahead and cut out our top. And we're going to start with the front and back pieces. So number seven and number, I'm sorry, number 17 and number 16. Now, on the pattern, this is way too long. It's not the look that I'm going for. Now, if you want it to come all the way down to your belly button as shown on the pattern envelope, great, don't do anything. If you want to do a shorter version, which is the one that I'm going to do, then simply fold where you see this double line. You're just going to fold it instead of cutting it off in case you want to use it in the future. Just going to fold at that line and this now becomes our shorter piece. So you want to go ahead and lay your pattern piece number 16 onto your fabric against the fold because we're cutting this out on the fold of the fabric. And you're going to go ahead and cut. Now that I've cut this out, I have all of my pieces cut out on the fold. I have 16, 17, and 14, and you're going to cut these three pieces out again 
in your lining fabric. Now the only pieces left to cut out of the uh, top are number 18 and number 20. This is the tie that you see in the front of the swimsuit and this is the strap that's going to go around your neck. And you only need to cut one piece out. You don't need to cut two out. I'm going to cut off all this excess. I'm going to smooth out my fabric and using only one layer of fabric. I'm going to lay my pattern pieces onto my fabric. And I'm going to cut out one of each. You don't need to cut these out of lining. Now that I've cut out all of my pattern pieces, I'm going to finish cutting out my lining and so should you. And then once we have all of our pieces cut, we can begin sewing. Now you should have all of your pattern pieces cut. You should have your tie and your strap for your top. You should have two pieces lining and fabric for all three pieces, 14, 16, and 17 of the top. You should also have two pieces each for the bottom, 27 and 28, in both lining and fabric. And now all we need to do is cut out our elastic using our guides. Now the first guide is 29. It should be cut to the same size you cut your, your bottom and your tops. So I cut a size 8 for my bottom. And so we're cutting out number 29 and 26, which is the waist elastic and the leg elastics for our bottom. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take your elastic and you're going to measure it out the length of your pattern, uh, pattern piece guide and you're going to cut for number 29. You can set that aside and you're going to cut for number 26 two of these because you have two legs. So you're going to measure out one and you're going to cut and then you're going to measure that same piece out and cut another one and these are for your legs so just set those aside and then you're going to need to cut the one for your top which goes across around your your body and so that is piece number 19 and if you see really tiny here it says center front on fold which means you need to cut your elastic out on the fold so this is not enough so I'm going to grab another piece of elastic and I'm going to fold it in half and then measure it out and then cut. So I'm going to set that aside for my top. And now we're going to go to the sewing machine we're going to start piecing our bathing suit together. We are going to be sewing this swimsuit using a zigzag stitch the entire time. The width of our zigzag stitch will change. We're also going to use our sergers. If you have a serger, if not, you can use a very wide zigzag stitch as you see on my screen here. For the rest of our swimsuit, like attaching our elastics uh, or joining joining two pieces together, I'm going to be using my, my serger, but if you don't have a serger, we will be using a very uh, wide zigzag stitch. And so to begin, I'm going to be using my stretch stitch, which for me on my machine is number two. For your machine, if you don't have a specific stretch stitch, which would be outlined in your manual, you can use just a very narrow zigzag stitch. We're going to start with our bottom pieces. And so what we're going to do is you're going to take your lining pieces first and you're going to attach at the crotch. So you want to make sure right sides are facing if you have a right side to your lining. And you want to make sure that your notches align. So you always want to pin your notches first. So I'm going to pin one notch. And then I'm going to pin the other. 
as you sew because we're using a narrow zigzag stitch and we are using a stretch fabric. We want to make sure that you are stretching your fabric just a tad bit as you're sewing. As you can see, one piece is bigger than the other. So we're going to sew and we're going to be pulling just a little bit until both pieces are even as you see here. And you're going to attach the crotch the same way with your swimwear fabric. So right sides together, you're going to pin at your notches, you're going to sew it the exact same way. Go ahead and trim the crotch on your swimwear fabric too. And now we're going to sew the sides. So right sides facing, you're going to align your notch on the sides, pin there first, then pin at the top and at the bottom. And you should pin both sides. In case you are wondering, this is supposed to be longer. So don't you worry about that. We're going to sew right through the bottom of it. Now you're going to put this under your sewing machine and using your zigzag narrow stretch stitch, you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So the edge of your fabric should be 5 eighths of an inch away from your needle. Okay, you should have sewn both your lining the same way as your um, swimsuit fabric. And so you want to trim off the excess on the side. So you're going to trim it down to a quarter inch on the side seams. And you're going to do that for both the fashion fabric, swimwear fabric, and your lining. Now we need to join our lining to our swimsuit. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to leave the um, lining turned wrong sides out, right? Wrong sides out. And we're going to turn our swimwear fabric right sides out. So right side out for the swimwear and wrong side out for the lining. And we're simply going to put the lining inside of our swimsuit. And you're going to pin at the seams at the crotch. So where we join the crotch, you want to make sure you are pinning there. And then you want to match your side seams and you want to pin there. And you're going to do that for the other leg. Match. Now when you look inside of your panty or we turn it inside out, you won't see any stitching on the inside because we put it in with the wrong side facing the wrong side of our fashion fabric. So now we have a nice clean inside. Now we need to join these together so that they work as one fabric. And the way I'm going to do that is by using my serger. If you have a serger, great. You're just going to serge both these together along the top of your waistband. And then you're going to serge uh, along the leg opening so that these become one. If you don't, you can use your zigzag by aligning both your fabrics and aligning them against the very edge of your presser foot and then using a zigzag stitch, a very a wide zigzag stitch just to join 
both these fabrics together. Okay, I have surged all the way around both my leg openings and my waistband. Now this fabric is one and I'm going to sew it as if it were just one fabric. Now what we need to do is use our elastics. So make sure that you grab the elastic, the elastic that you cut out for your leg openings. And what you're going to do before we attach it to our leg openings is we're going to lap over 5 eighths of an inch and using a wide zigzag stitch, I'm going to sew these together. So that it's like this. And you're going to do that to both. Make sure that your elastic does not twist. You're going to do that for both. So overlap 5 eighths of an inch using a very wide zigzag stitch. Now we're going to pin them to the inside of our leg. So I'm going to place the part that we overlapped towards the crotch seam. And I'm going to pin. And now, in essence, we're going to be stretching this to fit. As you can see, the elastic is smaller than the opening. It's intended to be that way because you want your leg uh, opening to be secure. And when you get in water, your swimsuit tends to stretch. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it so that both are the same. And then pin. Now, as I'm sewing, in between these two pins, I'm going to stretch. So I'm going to start at one pin, put the pin on the other side, and I'm going to be using a very wide zigzag stitch. The edge of the fabric and the edge of the elastic are up against each other, so we're working right at the edge. Do a couple of stitches and then you're going to stretch the elastic. The elastic and the fabric edges are aligned and we're just sewing a very wide zigzag stitch. Now we have added the elastic all the way around our leg. Now what we need to do is fold it in and then sew on the top. So cut off any loose threads you may have and working on the top of our fabric. We're going to fold it in and it will automatically stop at 3 eighths of an inch because that's how wide the elastic is. And we're going to keep the edge of your presser foot along the edge of your fabric. And we're going to sew a neat zigzag stitch all the way around, folding under the elastic as you get to it. and now you have finished one leg opening. Now you're going to do the other leg opening the same exact way. Once you finish off both of your leg openings, 
Now it's time to add the elastic to our waist. Now you're going to do, do the same thing. You're going to overlap your elastic by 5 eighths of an inch and you're going to stitch it together. And starting at the back, you want to pin the part that's overlapped to the center back of your uh, waist and you're going to pin it and then you're going to pull the elastic so that everything is the same and then you're going to let it go and pin. Now you've distributed the elastic evenly, so as you're sewing and pulling, the elastic will attach all the way around the same way that we did the leg opening. You're going to sew all the way around and you're going to pull in between your pins as you're sewing. Once you've attached your elastic to the top, you're going to do the same thing we did for the leg and you're going to turn it over, sewing on the right side, three eighths of an inch, you're going to fold over and you're going to zigzag all the way around. You want to pull as you're sewing. You're just pulling sli slightly, you're not pulling very hard, you're just tugging a bit. Now we have attached the elastic to the top of our bottoms. Now you are all done with your bottoms. We can set these aside because they're finished. And now we can start working on our top. We're going to start with pieces 16 and 14. Uh, of our lining and we're going to do the same exact thing with our fashion fabric so I'm only going to show it to you once using our lining and then you can do the same exact steps using your fashion fabric. So what we want to do is first we want to align our notches as you can see you should have two dots on number 16. There should also be two notches and there should be two notches for the bottom of piece number 14 and then there should be either two dots or two slits for the top where the strap is going to go. So working with the bottom of piece 14, we're going to align our single notches. And you're going to pin at your notch. And then you're going to pin at the edge. And then do the same thing on the other side. So pin your notch. Now as you can see, piece 14 is bigger than piece 16. And it's meant to be, so don't worry about it. You're just going to smooth it so that it meets the dot that we made. And you're going to pin. Whoa. This dot is where we're going to stop sewing. So we're going to st start sewing here. We're going to stop at this dot. And then we're going to sew here. And we're going to stop at this other dot. And as you can see, there's extra fabric here, which we're going to leave there. So starting at one end, and using a very narrow zigzag stitch, we're going to sew until we get to our dot. I'm going to back stitch and stop at the dot. And 
so now you're going to start at this dot and so all the way to the other end now we've left this opening here as you can see yours will look the same exact way because that is where our tie is going to go it gonna, it's going to go through here and then create that gathered effect on our top so you're going to take the back piece number 17 and you're going to attach it right sides facing and you're going to sew the sides together and you're going to sew both side seams you're going to sew the other side the exact same way okay once you have sewn your top piece the same way that we did our lining and now you have both of them you're going to keep the lining one turned right wrong sides out and you're going to turn your uh, swimsuit fabric right sides out and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the bottom you're going to slip one inside of the other And you're going to pin at the side seams so you have a clean outside and a clean inside so you're going to pin on both sides and we're going to do the same thing that we did with our uh, bottoms we're going to sew the edges using a zigzag or in my case if you have a serger you can do uh, serge the bot the edges together so that this then becomes one piece now that both the bottom of our top and the top of our top are pinned together go ahead and if you're using your machine machine zigzag all the way around to join these pieces at the top and at the bottom or use your serger now that you have joined both of your pieces either with a serger or with a zigzag stitch we are going to finish the bottom first and then we'll start working on the top so working on the bottom of your top we're going to sew the hem so what we're going to do is you're going to turn it 5 eighths of an inch to the inside like this and you're going to align your presser foot this side of your presser foot with the edge of your fabric and keeping both fabrics without any bunching or folding make sure you feel for anything make sure it's nice and straight you're going to stitch using a wide zigzag stitch all the way around cut off any loose threads now you finished off the bottom of your top and now we're going to work on the top and basically we're doing the same exact thing that we've done with the waistband of our bottom and our pant and our uh, leg openings we're going to take our elastic and we're going to overlap and sew it together okay I have attached my elastic all the way around my the top of my blout my top and I have gone ahead and off camera I've sewn together both pieces I've done narrow one I have folded it in half lengthwise and I went ahead and sewed all the way down the length of it leaving the opening at both ends now I'm going to turn this inside out using a safety pin if you have one handy so basically I just put my safety pin on one end and I put it through the hole and I sift it all the way through until it comes out the other end and this is the strap that goes around our neck 
here's the strap. And for the tie that goes in the center of our top in a kind of knotted, I have sewn together both ends all the way down. I left a small opening so I could turn this inside out. See? And then I continued to sew and then I closed off the other end. And so now I'm just going to push this through and then pull it out and then do the other side. And you want to make sure that you pull out the corners so that they're nice and pointy. Now we're going to set this one aside and what we're going to do first is we're going to, using one end of our strap, we're going to attach it to one side of the front where you had those notches. So I'm going to pin like this. And I'm going to just sew across the top just to secure it. And now we're going to turn under like we have done before. And we're going to sew all the way around. We are only doing one strap at the moment. Now the reason that we did not attach the other end is because right now I want you to go ahead and put your tie through the hole and out the top and you're just going to tie a double knot. You can adjust it once you have it on. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and put this on. And the reason you're going to put it on is because you're going to put this around your neck and then you're going to see if you need to shorten it to make it fit. It's cut extra long so that once you put it on you can wrap it around your neck and see how much you need to cut off and then simply attach it to your top. You can adjust it. Align it where it needs to be, so find those little notches. You can try it on, pin it, adjust it, and then once you have it the way you want so that the strap fits nicely snug around your neck but without being too tight or pulling, you can pin it in place and you can sew from the top by just sewing right over the zigzag stitches that are already there. So just follow the zigzag stitches to attach the other side. And that's it. You have finished your top. That's all there is to it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see all of the amazing swimsuits you guys will be making. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye darlings.